What's up guys, so in this tutorial you're going to learn how to use the Marvel API and connect it together uh, with a view application. So as you can see we have here uh, the uh, Marvel characters and each Marvel character has an own card and we can click on the character and it will load basically the name of the character and also a description and we also load the image of, uh, of each character and this is all dynamically so you can see we have here a uh, character path uh, with nested routes we will also talk about how we can implement uh, routes nested routes uh, inside view uh, so if we go back it will take us to the main page again so we can also click on other characters and we get always back uh, the name and the uh, uh, image of the current character we are requesting now this is all working in the background we are making requests uh, to the API endpoints of Marvel now for this tutorial I will show you both ways on how to do this the first way will be uh, making the API calls inside each component of our application and later on I will also show you how you can refactor your application so that the state will be global so we will use a views in-house solution for state management called Vuex so as you can see here is our Vuex file and we will basically refactor this so that we will see both ways on how to approach this kind of problems uh, on how uh, to approach this kind of application and especially how to refactor uh, your application so that uh, you have a local state and then you want maybe later on transform it into a global state so that you can use uh, these uh, functions everywhere inside all components i can't wait to get started hope you will enjoy this tutorial and if you have any problems questions along the way uh, let me know in the comment section other than that let's get started so to get started make sure to have view installed on your machine if you haven't installed view simply type in npm install view and then add the global tag now what this global tag does it will install view globally and that means that you can then use uh, view uh, in every directory on your machine if you would not if we would not add the global tag that would mean we would only install view in the current directory we are in so i'm currently for example in the root directory so it would therefore be only able to use a view inside the root directory which is which is something uh, you don't really want to do so whenever you're installing frameworks and things like that and make sure to add the global tag all right so once you have done this uh, let's go to the desktop cd desktop and let's create here a new view project so view create and then marvel api like so hit enter and view will now ask us if we want to use the default setting or if we want to set up our project on our own let's choose that we want to set it up on our own and here we can now uh, use spacebar to select what we want uh, inside our project so we want definitely have bubble included we also need uh, the router, so hit space to select the router. We also want to use Vuex for a state management later on, and we can deselect uh, linter because we don't really need linter for this tutorial. Hit enter, and we want to use uh, history mode for the router, so yes, and save inside the uh, package JSON file, and I don't want to save that as a preset for the future, so no, hit enter so view will now initialize the project for us in the background in the meantime we can go to developer.marvel.com and here you can basically create a new account if you haven't already i won't click here and get started because this will take me immediately to my account page where my public key and my secret key is displayed and you will see when you sign up a new account that they will they want you to uh, sign up an agreement because we are using the original characters and storylines whatsoever uh, they're pretty serious about their api and therefore you have to uh, make an agreement that you are that your app is not monetized and things like that so um, make sure to hide your secret key and your public key because with these keys 
uh, everyone can pull data from the API and these keys are associated with your account so I think they will hold you accountable uh, for anything that are related to these API keys which is why I don't wish show them but once you have signed up uh, you will be redirected to the account page with the public keys and the secret keys and here down they also want uh, you to add some authorized referrers so list any domains that can make calls to the Marvel uh, Comics API using your API key here so in my case uh, or in our case we are developing locally so therefore I just add locals and that's it and I also want uh, us to tell uh, them about the project we are currently working on. So I just simply typed in practicing. I think we're totally fine with that. Now let's go back and view is finished uh, with initializing our project. So CD Marvel API and then item dots to open up the text editor. Now, if this is your first time using Vue.js, don't worry, I will explain here everything so right off here inside inside the source folder uh, we can find everything that's important inside our application so here we have the store js file which is the vuex file we will talk about this later uh, the router file which is uh, which comes from Vue itself and as you can see we have currently two paths here uh, so we have one path home and one path about in the main js file uh, we can find uh, some configuration. So basically we are setting view up here uh, We are importing the router and the store and connecting it uh, together with our app Inside app view, which is basically the root file of our application. We have two router links um, Which are more or less the navigation inside our application and we have currently two links home and about and inside views we have home and here we are rendering hello world and hello world is inside components and we are passing down here props welcome to your Vue.js app so let's go to our terminal yarn serve to start the server and then we need to go to localhost uh, 8080 and you will see we get the standard template uh, from you uh, with the message message we are passing down so we can to view js app so if i would go here and change the app to this is a prop that is passed down you will see it will update, update to this is a prop that is passed down so if you're coming from react you're probably familiar with props um the logo is coming from here so if i would remove this you see the logo disappears and inside components in hello world you see we get here the props and message and we have here the link so for now let's remove here everything except for the diff and we should be left with an empty if I save the file with an empty uh, file so I haven't planned this app too much, uh, so I'm not quite sure about this st structure, but the first thing we need to do is, uh, I think, to create the characters component where we pull the data in. So let's create here a new component called characters.view. And here I can type in template and hit tab to generate a new uh, view component file so if you want to do the same you can install the uh, package for view uh, in atom so that so then you can do this as well then we will need to add a diff whenever we have a component and inside here uh, let's simply type in hello this is characters.view and here add export default let's add a name for this component let's call it characters like so now we can go to home for example and let's remove here hello world and here down at the components we can uh, type in characters like so and also import the character component like they we are basically redoing what they did with hello world so add components and then characters.view now if you go back 
get an error, so let's add here a comma. And we should get now the message, but we don't. Um, that's because we have to add, of course, characters here with a self-closing tag. And there we go. Hello, this is characters view. So this is working, and if we open up the uh, developer tool from Chrome, you see we have no errors whatsoever. So let's go to the Marvel page. So when you go to the Marvel page and go to how to's and then click on general information, uh, we will get you will get to the site here uh, where they show you basically um, the principles of their API. So if you are not familiar with APIs, APIs are endpoints that hold data that we can request. So for example, they have here the address HTTP gatewaymarvel.com. We want public comics. Now, if you would make a request to this uh, address, it will give us all the comics from Marvel back. So you see, they also uh, say that we need to require the params, which is the API key and things like that. So the first thing I would like to do is to go back to our app and let's go here to source and create a new file. Let's call this marvel.js. And inside here, we want to create two export cons. The first one we call secret key and the second one export cons public key. Now, of course, uh, you need to paste in your secret and your public key inside here. And once you have done this, we can go to characters and then import here the public key and the secret key like so from uh, dot dot Marvel J Marvel. Actually, we don't need the JS tag and then we should be able to use them. So uh, like I said before, I will not show the secret and public key, but simply uh, paste them in inside the double quotes and safety file and that's it. Right, so the next thing we need to do is to make some kind of API calls. So let's go back here quickly and let's go to the general info page one more time. Let's copy here this, this address. And let's paste it in inside our character component. But before we do that, we have to uh, create the methods tag here and inside here let's call let's create a function called get characters like so uh, function and here let's paste in for now the uh, API endpoint and I actually don't want to get the comics but the characters and we also need to add the API key but we also need to add a module so that we are able to make API calls. Now we could use fetch from JavaScript, but I think Axios does a really great job uh, making API calls. So let's go back here to our terminal, shut down the server, and then uh, let's add yarn at Axios. And if you're using NPM, simply type in NPM install in the Axios. So yarn add axios. And in the meantime, we can go here and import already axios from axios like so. And once that's finished, we can start the server again. And now inside here, get characters, we can make an API call by using axios get. Now inside here, we need to use these. Uh, so here inside, we need to use these two symbols. And with them, we can then add the public key really easily. So let's copy here first the address, paste it in. And then we need to add a question mark equals, or let me actually uh, double check this because they have an example here. Yeah, there we go. So they're showing that we need to add the API key. So we need a question mark without the equal sign API key like so and then an equal sign and then the api key so here we can say dollar sign and then we can add the public key because we are importing the public key um actually we don't yeah i made sure of course we don't want to add the get characters inside home view so let's copy this here quickly 
uh, we want to go to characters view so now here let's paste it in like so and let's import axios from axios and make sure to remove the import here inside home all right now we have here uh, access to the public key because we are importing the public key and now we can make a promise so result and let's see what we get console log result and then let's catch if we have any errors so error console log error All right and if we go back to our app and refresh the app Uh, we get basically nothing um, that is because we have to make a call to the function of course so let's create here uh, let's add here mounted add a comma here and then we want to call this get characters and now we should get a result back and there we go and we get data back from the api endpoint so this is working now inside data data result you see we have an array 20 arrays and each of these array, uh, arrays contain a name uh, that is connected to an ID. So this is exactly what we want. So with that, let's create first a data where we can hold the arrays. So here, let's type in data like so, add a comma, and then return. And here, let's create a new data or an array like so, and call it characters. Now, here we can we can split up the result because the result is nested in another array. We have to split up the the result. So let's do this: result uh, data. I think yeah, one more time data, and then we need results, and then we can say I think for each item so everything that is inside the results here uh, let's console log for now the item and let's remove the console log from here uh, to see what we get yeah so this is working we get now each array that's inside result as an own item and this is something that we can now use to push it to our character array so here i simply say this characters uh, push item and when we go now here to the top and add I don't know maybe a list and a link and for each link we want we for a character in characters we should be able to say then a character for example name and get the name back for each character so as you can see it works just fine uh, we get now for each character that's inside the array the name i could also access for example the, the description and get the description back and i can do this because in each array you see we have a description some characters seem to have another description so it's then simply empty but comics is another object we have events which is an object we can call the id uh, the name resource uri uh, the series which is also an object uh, stories which is an object and a thumbnail so when it's an object we have to split up uh, again so because an object often contains another array we have to split up the object uh, for now we are totally fine let's confirm this and add here the id and we get the ID from each character. So I just want to display the character name. So the next thing I want to do is to add somehow the ability that we can click on each character and this will take us to the specific character page so that we can view the details of each character. So to do that, uh, let's create here a new component and let's call this character view. Again, let's add here the template and a div and for now let's simply say hello uh, this is character.view and here inside export we want to add the name character like so 
and because each character will have their the their own unique ID, we need to create nested uh, routes, I think. And when we go back here to the official documentation from Marvel API, we have here, uh, we can click here on interactive documentation and they give you basically the, uh, um, yeah, there's something off with their server. I always get these kind of errors when I try to re reload something. And again, so let's see if I, now it works. So you can see we are currently calling here the uh, public characters API endpoint, which fetches the list of characters. And then we can also uh, fetch the uh, single character ID by adding here an ID. And this will make sense. In this case, it would make sense to also create nested uh, routes inside our app and luckily in view it's pretty easy to do that uh, so let's go here to router and let's copy here this add a comma paste it in and let's call our route character like so slash and then add an id like so and the name should be character and down here in the component we want to um we want to add components and then character like so make sure to have the dot view here at the end so once we have done this uh, let's go back to character and here let's display for now the route that we get, are getting so we can do this by typing this dot uh, dollar sign route uh, params id Think this should work if we go back to our app and type in character and then for example 10 we should be able to get back the number 10 and if I type in here 55 we should get back 55 so this is working so we have just created nested params inside and uh, nested routes inside view so now I want to make this dynamic whenever we are clicking on a character uh, we should go and add the ID of each character. So currently we have the ID here and when we go back to home so each character has their own unique ID and I want to use this ID uh, for the route parents. So uh, let's change it back to name and let's add here actually a route link like so and let's add the character name inside this route link and here we have to define the name uh, which is character and inside parents we have to define the ID that we are accepting so ID and then we are saying uh, character ID so if you go back you see we have now links for each name and if I click on the name we are going to the character with the the ID of 1011334 uh, which should be actually 3D man we can confirm this in just a moment uh, let's see we have uh, Ajaxis and Ajax, Ajaxis has the ID of 1010878 so Ajaxis is the last one so if I click on Ajaxis we should see this ID so 1018 uh, zero eight. So one uh, zero one zero eight seven zero. So this is the same ID, and this is finally working. And you see, we also have the ID here at the top. So let's go to character. Now, how do we pull the data from uh, the character? Because we are only making the API call currently in characters. So we need to somehow get the data down to character. Now we could use props, but there would be that would be actually a problem because using props means we need to add character to our render view, like so. And that would mean that we would see the character view inside the character view, which is something we don't want. So in this case, uh, we could use uh, already view X for this to make this global. Uh, but I want to show you both ways on how you can approach this kind of problem. So uh, let's add here another methods inside character. 
and here also let's import uh, the uh, public key from dot dot uh, marvel and then we also want to import axios from axios like so and inside here let's create a method called a function called get character and make it a function and here we make again an axis call axis get at the symbols here and let's uh, copy the address here and paste it in and we have to of course uh, change this so let's add here a slash and then we need to add the ID from the character now we currently don't have the ID uh, we uh, are the only way to access the ID currently is to use uh, the route parents ID so here let's create a new variable and call this uh, char ID or actually character ID like so let's equal this to this dot a dollar sign route params ID and now we should be able to say character ID so we want to request the character ID which comes from here and this is coming from character so on which kind of character on depending on which kind of character we are clicking we are adding here the ID from the character and here we are accessing the uh, character ID by saying this raw parents ID and it's coming from the browser's path you can see so we have here the ID from each character so we should be able actually to make a promise here result and let's see what we get back console log result and again i will also add a catch error like so to see what we get when we have some kind of errors and of course we have to call this function so again mount it comma and then at this dot get character like so and when we go back now you see we are get, already get a response back so if i open that up data data we should get now only one result back instead of 20 arrays because we are only requesting one specific character uh, with this id so one zero one zero eight seven zero one zero one zero eight seven zero and if i open that up you see we get the name back and all the data uh, that it belongs to this kind of character so here we can now do basically the same uh, we can create a data like so add a comma and then return and here we create this time a character array instead of a characters array and here we can then basically do the same we have to uh, split up first the result data data results like so and then for each an item and then we can say uh, this does character push the item and when you're gonna hit the top we can make more or less the same as we did before let's create a list and here we want to say well we for uh, char in character and then let's say char name and maybe let's get also the char description like so and when we go back you see we get ajaxes and i think ajaxes has no description that's why the description is empty so if we go back and click on agent brands um, or some character that has a description i think hbomb has one yeah so you see we get uh, the name of the character and then the description so this is working and this completely dynamic key right so the next thing we could do is to get the thumbnail um, the thumbnail is actually stored inside each character so let me see here quickly if we click on data 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 you see inside results for each character we have a thumbnail which is an object and inside thumbnail we have a path so we need to get this path we need to split this open up 
in order to be able to use that and when we will do this now so uh, let's go back here and let's close here by the way everything to stay organized and here inside this get character uh, let's create um, do we actually need to create another method i don't think actually uh, let's add here definitely a url which is a string and we also need to add a, a size which is also uh, just a string and I will explain this uh, in just a moment uh, for now uh, let's try to get the uh, URL so we know that in um, inside the item we have the thumbnail so uh, we could say this dot URL equals to um, item thumbnail path and let's console log um, this dot url to see what we got let's go back yeah so this is working we got the thumbnail back so when we go back here to the uh, the marvel api page uh, we can go to how choose and click on images and again i get the uh, server server error so there's definitely something uh, on their side going on at least the API points are working just fine so let's refresh this one more time there we go and so you see they say we have to add uh, the path which is uh, specific for or unique for each character and then they say we also need to add the extension at JPEG very very important and you see they also say we need to define the size of the image and so they give us here different options and i will go uh, for standard large so let's copy this here and inside size let's paste it in and very important to add here the jpeg and with that we should be actually able to get already the image um, by saying that the image is let's add the, add the quotes here and let's add here the item path to it with a dollar sign like so and then we need to a forward slash and another dollar sign where we add at uh, this dot size so this dot size and when we console lock now the url we should get back the url with standard large jpeg so we are getting basically exactly the same back what they have tell us to do so let's try that out and let's try out to display the uh, image so let's add your image and let's change this to source like so and then here we can simply say a thing url and we should get back the image so this is working and let's go back and let's try out for another character agent zero and then we get this character and let's create a uh, click on 3d man and you see it just works fine for each character we are loading the image um yeah so i think we are uh, pretty much done with that um as you can see it's pretty straightforward with you uh, probably why you got so popular uh, lately it's very straightforward and if you're coming from react it's really easy to work with you um, and yeah um, so we're basically all right finished with the app um, as you can see we are currently making the API calls uh, inside the uh, character component and the characters component and now we could refactor that and use uh, view X to make these kind of calls and the pro about that uh, the pro about using Vuex or state management library is that you have uh, then access to the api to each component uh, or to every component right now we can only access for example the character um, uh, information inside the character component now we could pass down the props but let's say we have 50 other components that rely on this kind of information let's say we want to display the character information on um, I don't know the profile logging page or the profile dashboard if we would have 
an authentication system, for example, and each user would have characters. How do we do that? Now, again, we could pass down that with props like they showed with the Hello World example, but this is actually hard to manage and also a little bit hacky, I would say. So instead of that, we can use Vuex uh, to create uh, a global state where we can then, for example, access, get character uh, on every component that we have inside our application. So again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, because what we're doing currently is totally fine. As you can see, our app is working. But just in case you're wondering, I will also show you how to do it with UX. And we will do this right now. So the first thing we need to do is to refactor our application. So let's start with characters. So we're making here this function and we are calling this function whenever it's mounted. So let's go back here to store. So inside state, we have to define our data. So this is basically the same we are doing here. So in each component, we have, for example, a character, a URL, whatsoever. In store, we need to do this inside state. So let's create here first a characters array, like so. And inside mutations, we are doing basically the same we do inside methods. So we are uh, defining what a function can do. So here, let's uh, create a function called get characters, add a state to it. And then here, we can simply copy what we're doing inside characters, very important. So let's copy the access call. And actually, let's remove that from our characters component. And let's paste it inside store, like so. And because we are using the public key and axios, we need to import that. So import axios from axios, like so. And then we can also import um, public key from uh, dot dot. Actually, it's just dot because we are on the same uh, uh, folder path. So marvelous stored inside source so we currently in uh, source we only have to type in dot forward slash and that's basically it now instead of saying uh this character's push we need to say state characters push item and that's all we need to do and down here in the actions we need to define uh, what we can call so we can only call from co the components um, the action. We cannot directly call mutations. The actions then can call the mutation and change the state. So inside here, we can say get characters and then um, add here uh, context like so. And then we say context commit and then the name of the mutation, which is get characters. So get characters like so. And that's all. When we go now to characters, we can actually remove the data. And we also can remove this here. And we can remove the function that we are calling. And here we can import now uh, map state from VUX, like so. And then we need the computed method, add a comma. And here we can say dot 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 map state and then we can assign a variable let's call this like we did before characters and characters is state state characters like so and when we console lock now this dot characters we should get back more or less the same result we did before and we get actually an error so let's see Let's refresh the app and currently our uh, characters uh, data is empty but uh, we have some kind of character so again if I would remove this and call for this characters we would get the error that this characters is undefined so Remember, we had before the data, so inside our character, we still have it. So before we called or defined the data inside data, and we deleted that. As you can see, our file is actually looking much more cleaner than before, and that's because we uh, refactored our logic to the store to view X. And 
Because we are defined inside maps that characters, we have no access to these characters. And this here is coming from the state, and the state is defined here. So state characters. And currently it's empty. But when we call the mutations via the action, so here we say, hey, whenever the action get characters gets called, call mutation get characters. And here we're making the axis call, blah, 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 splitting up the array. And then we are saying, hey, state characters, which is this here, push the item. And then we have access to the characters inside characters because we're calling this. Now, as you can see, currently our array is empty. And that's because we have to call the uh, um, action to uh, commit the mutation. And we can do this by saying actually inside mounted. So whenever we mount characters, uh, this store, this patch, and then simply get characters. And when I refresh now the page, you will see that actually let's remove this and paste this characters under the dispatch. And if I save the file now, you will see that we get the same result and we get back our characters and we get the console log with each character. So we have basically just refactored our uh, logic. Uh, we get the same result back. And as you can see, our character uh, components now really clean compared, for example, to our character and we store all the data here and the pro side of that is also that we can now call get characters on every component now we could create hundreds of different components and whenever we need to call get characters we can do this now instead of rewriting this logic every time so that's why we use state management it makes it more easy to manage data globally instead of locally inside each component so let's do this uh, the same approach with character. Now this is a little bit different because we need to add here the ID. So let's go here first to store. Let's create a new uh, mutation and let's call it get character. And this time we want to accept a state and an ID. And here let's copy or actually let's go to character and let's copy here our access call. Let's remove the access call from our character and let's paste it in inside our get character. Now here we need to do two things. We need to define what the character ID is. So the character ID will be the ID that we will inject. And here inside get actions, we need to say get character like so. And let's make this a function like so. So uh, commit or actually context and ID. And here we can then say context commit and then get character. And then we also want to add the ID. And inside character, let's remove here the function. Let's remove here the call. And we can remove also the character ID from here. And again, we need to import map state from view x and one more time inside computed we can now say uh, dot 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 map state and then simply say character this time equals to state state character now very important inside store we have to create the data so character array like so and we need to make here a change instead of saying this character again we need to say state this character because we want to push it to the state character array and we also define here as you can see this url so uh, let's add here also a url string and instead of saying this url we say state url and we also define this size. Um, I think we can do this inside our components. So let's remove here this size so that we only are left with the path so that we have only 
add the size in the component and the reason why I'm doing that is because we can change the size of the image dynamically inside the component everything that is inside our store is more or less uh, static now we could actually do it dynamically or make it dynamically but it's more complex and I think it's more easier to do something like that inside the component so here we have the state URL which is the item thumbnail path and we no longer need to console log this URL, so it's remove this as well. And inside character, we need to go to mounted. Actually, let's remove the URL as well. And inside uh, mounted, add a comma. And here we can also say uh, this dot store dot dispatch. And then we want to dispatch get character and the ID that we want to add. Remember that get character accepts an ID that will be then used to make the access call. So here we can say this dot route dot params ID because the route params ID holds uh, the ID of the character we want to request. And I got a typo, so let's see get character, yeah. There we go and one more error uh, store 59 let's see 59 so what did I did wrong I think I have to remove this state ID hmm all right so I think I have to add here a comma yeah that was the issue. So let's click on 3D man. And let's see what we get. Uh, property method URL is not defined. Okay. So uh, here we have to get also the URL. So URL state state URL. And we have to add a comma, I think. And this should actually work now. Let's see. Okay, at least we don't get any errors. I think um, we have to add the... Uh, um, yeah, let's call this pre-URL. And uh, we have to make the final URL, right? Uh, so let's add here inside mount uh, this get image. And inside... Um, actually, we have two mounts, so let's remove this. Inside methods, let's call get image let's create get image and here get image like so function and here I want to uh, make the final URL so um, yeah let's re let's add the URL back like so and then we can say URL equals to uh, pre Pre URL, and then we have to simply add uh, the size. So uh, this dot size, and now it should work again. Uh, I forget the comma. And let's see what we get. Pre URL is not defined. Yeah, I think I have to add this dot pre URL. Let's see, let's click on a uh, character and we still get an error. URL is not defined. Mounts is hooked. Uh, yeah, I think this dot URL is the problem. Yeah, finally we got it working. Now you notice that we have now two abyss uh, characters and two absorbing characters and if I click uh, on another one we got again the issue and if I click on this one we get you see it seems like whenever we are clicking on a new character it pushes it to our state and that's not something we want so let's go back to our store and inside get characters let's make whenever we are calling this the state character empty like so now when we go back it should always only have one a single character 
right so the images are working yeah all right so there's one thing you need to uh, you see we have now the same problem also for our character array a characters array so you see it always reloops uh, adding the uh, the items that's because whenever we are going to characters we say hey whenever it's mounted this patch get characters and so it always reinitializes it so let's make this also um, let's say also that whenever we call this that state characters should be empty and this should actually fix the issue so if I click here on hbomb Yeah, now you see it always stays at 20 arrays. There we go, and the images are loading quickly, and there we go. Now you see we only have two uh, small images. We have only small Im images inside uh, this API. You see the biggest image is probably uh, 464, 261, so um, yeah constraint and, and the max size is 500 pixels wide so um, that's not really big so my uh, my original plan was actually that we have like you know a banner where we show a big image of the character and down the description um, but I don't think we can actually do this with these kind of images so maybe we will display the data or the image here on the left side and on the right side the data of each character and here for the main page, uh, I think we will use CSS grid uh, to add some kind of boxes uh, where we can click on the character to get the information, something like that. So that's something for the next part. Uh, I hope you enjoyed so far. We are pretty much uh, finished with the logic behind our app. Uh, again, if you have any questions, if something was not clear for you, feel free to use the comment section. And so the next thing will be to start the application. All right, so in this last part, like I said, we will uh, start the app. So uh, nothing really too fancy, but just that we have some kind of visuals going on. Uh, so let's go to characters and here let's add another div and let's call this cards uh, container, something like that. And make sure to wrap everything up uh, inside the card container, like so. And here inside uh, style, uh, we can say card container and we want to use for display a grid and then we also can define um, so grid uh, templates columns auto 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 so that we are left with three and let's also make uh, the grid gap like 30 pixels and now we need to create a card so div card and let's make sure to wrap or actually we don't need to wrap here anything up uh, so we want for each character an own unique card so we for uh, character in characters like so and then we can copy here for now the link and paste it inside the card let's remove this here and let's add here for now an h3 and get the character name let's see what we get all right so we already have some kind of wishes going on where we have three columns and actually let me think about this quickly yeah um let's start the card now so card and do we actually want to maybe let's tweet let's add a text align to the left left like so All right and I also want some kind of padding going on here on the left so for now let's leave it as at, at center and let's add a background color of some grayish color so that we have some kind of reference right so let's make a min height I don't know 200 pixels 
and we also want to add max width of 300 pixels let's see what we get okay I think we can also define that here actually we can define the width here so 200 pixels 200 pixels 200 pixels yeah and do I actually align this here can I somehow what if we add margin left 300 pixels for example what do we get actually something that I am looking for I mean we are totally fine with that for now or for this kind of tutorial and uh, let's change here let's get the card one more time and get the h3 let's make the color white like so and maybe we add also i mean we could also add here for example the images to the characters um but i think um for this tutorial we are fine with that what we have so uh, let's add here actually a button instead so inside raw the link we don't want to display the name of the character but a button and let's call this button view and here we can then add a class and call this button view for example and down here button view uh, let's add the padding of 10 pixels there we go uh, padding or actually a margin top of maybe 50 pixels there we go uh, border radius maybe 15 pixels and let's make the width different so do we get when we say 50 150 pixels Shit, that's too big 120 there we go um, then background color uh, transparent and then the color white and then font size maybe 12 pixels and font weight bold I think that's totally fine and let's add here also a cursor uh, pointer right so when I click now on 3D man, we go to 3D man. So let's style the character component as well quickly. Uh, so again, let's add here a diff. Let's call this flex container. And let's wrap everything up inside the flex container. And then inside here, let's create a class called flex and another one called flex. And so inside here, uh, which will be the left one, uh, actually before we do that, let's go quickly here down to bottom flex container and then display flex and then align item center and then also justify content center. So now when we go back, we got something like that. And inside here, um, we want to get actually for this we can say we for um or do we actually need to do that inside this yeah let's add it here we for char and characters like so and let's display here the char name and let's remove this here and also the link at uh, the route parent and do we have
have to wrap that up into a paragraph tag. It seems like it disappeared. I think we have to define also the flex. So here, let's get flex and then uh, flex 50%. Right, so let's see. Where is our um, character is not defined? Yeah, it's called character. There we go. Let's call the second one flex two, and let's define flex two. And let's make the flex like 80% and this one like only 30 and let's add the image to the second flex so get the image and paste it in like so and hmm, maybe add here also a margin of maybe 100 pixels see text line right yeah I think that's okay uh, let's add here um, let's make actually the name an h3 and the description a paragraph so char description and currently 3D man has no description, so let's click on, I think HBOM has a description. There we go, so we have now the description and the image, and I think we can make the image bigger, so let's try, uh, where's the image? And let's get, let's add a class, so uh, char image, like so. Then char image, and let's make um, the width like 100%, let's see what we get. Yeah, that's too big. Maybe 50. And a border radius of maybe 10 pixels to round it up. And I think maybe 30 because it's otherwise too pixelated. And let's actually make this 50 to 50. Now we can change the image, I think, to 50. Yeah, that's more the look I was going for. Um, yeah, outside the flex container, we could add a button and call it back. There we go. And let's give it a class of uh, button back. And we need to, of course, add here the router link. And because it's more or less a simple route, we can also simply say two, and then uh, characters. Actually, our characters component is inside home, so simply point to home, get the button, paste it in, and let's also uh, BTN back. Let's make the width like maybe 200 pixels something like that padding 20 pixels actually 10 or 15 is just fine there we go border radius uh, 25 pixels background um, color um, f2 f2 we can um, make it transparent and let's uh, increase the font size to font size to maybe 20 pixels there we go and let's add a margin to the bottom of maybe 100 pixels so that we have some kind of space there and yeah a cursor pointer and we are basically finished. So when I click now on back, we go back and 
right it seems like the link is wrong so i think we have to change it to simply forward slash so let's try this out one more time go back still not working um it seems like it didn't save the changes so one more time there we go so if I click on the character we get the character if I click on the back we go back um, yeah some characters don't have any images to it so maybe in a different size but again um, you get probably the idea um, of how to approach this kind of problem because that's what this tutorial was all about uh, so yeah I think we are finished with that of course we could do even more with that add a navigation and things like that but yeah uh, I hope you enjoyed so far I hope you learned a lot uh, again if you have any questions as always feel free to use the comment section if you enjoyed this kind of tutorial make sure to share it uh, and uh, give it a like if you enjoy it uh, or even subscribe if you enjoy my content I have even more on my channel and I plan on doing more especially in the front end part uh, and also in the mobile part so yeah stay tuned thanks for watching as always uh, and yeah see you maybe next time bye